the top 10 most expensive American cars of the 2000s. If this is your first time watching, I upload weekly and talk about all things cars from the late 80s up until the early 2000s. If this is of interest to you, be sure to subscribe and join the community. Also, at the end of each video, I make a tier list of all the cars mentioned, making for a controversial ending where we can all discuss our opinions. With all that said, let's get right to it. Chrysler 300 SRT8. The 300 name continued the traditional rear-wheel drive V8 power luxury format that was popular in the 70s. Most companies were moving away from this, especially Cadillac in the late 90s to early 2000s, before their big change in 2004. But as we all know, the 300 name gained popularity with its debut. I mean, these cars were everywhere. Upon its release, there are five trim levels, Base, Touring, Limited, 300C, and SRT8. The 300 would be the first vehicle to be powered with the 6.1 liter Hemi V8, making an additional 85 horsepower over the 5.7, which was 425. And if you didn't want a sedan, well, there was a wagon version from Dodge in the form of the Magnum. Essentially, the 300 SRT8 was a modern muscle car. Yes, I understand it has four doors, but it checks off more than it doesn't. A year prior to the 300 was the CTS-V with less power and a higher sticker price. Comparing sales numbers, the 300 outsold the CTSV by almost 80%. Was the Cadillac worth it for an extra 17 grand? Ford Thunderbird 50th Anniversary Edition. After a five year hiatus, the 11th gen Thunderbird was introduced for 2002, sharing its platform with the LS and Jaguar XF. The shift from the 10th gen to this design was truly unique. Even going back to the early 80s, the Thunderbird was this giant coupe. Technically speaking, the 11th gen Thunderbird was returning to the roots of the Thunderbird name as a two-passenger convertible, including the circular porthole windows on its removable hardtop, kind of a trademark you could say. To honor the Thunderbird name and its 50-year lifespan, Ford introduced a special anniversary edition. Just 1,500 units were produced. Included were a special 50th anniversary fender emblem, special paint color, stone and gold interior, leather cashmere seats, and a special plaque inside the glove box. These cars were no slouch either, a Jaguar designed V8 pushing 280 horsepower and 286 foot-pounds of torque. Chrysler Crossfire SRT6, another rear-wheel drive two-seat sports coupe. The Crossfire took inspiration from the 30s Art Deco period. Basically, its design took cues from classic cars of the 30s. Chrysler wanted to once again offer a luxurious performance coupe. If we go back to the 60s, then we see this with the 300 Letter Series. Like the 300, the Crossfire was produced during the Daimler-Chrysler era. I don't think I'm pronouncing that correctly. Daimler? I don't know. Chrysler was in charge of the interior and exterior styling, while Mercedes provided the R170 platform, and with that, the Crossfire shared many components with the SLK 320. After its initial release, Chrysler came out with an SRT6 model, the first Chrysler product to attain the SRT label, and it was only in production for one year. 2400 units of the coupe sold and 1200 units of the roadster sold. The SRT6 features an AMG 3.2 liter V6 making 330 horsepower and 310 foot pounds of torque. 100 more horsepower over base models. It only came with a 5 speed automatic and that was pretty consistent with AMG cars of the same era. I don't think I've ever seen one of these in person, at least it's been a while. These cars are super underrated in my opinion. Cadillac SRX. Remember I said earlier that Cadillac changed the game in 2004? Well, this is due to the new GM Sigma platform, which ran from 2004 all the way until 2015. All-wheel drive or rear-wheel drive was offered. All-wheel drive models were obviously more expensive. All-leather interior, heated front seats, wood trim, DVD system, sunroof, 18-inch wheels, and power foldable third-row seats were offered. The SRX won Car & Driver's 5 Best Trucks Luxury SUV Award for 2004, 2005 and 2006. Unfortunately, no V series was added. I think that would make for an awesome sleeper, although it would probably sell terribly. Insurance Institute for Highway Safety found that the 2005 to 08 SRX was worse than class for driver fatalities, with a death rate of 63 compared to its class average of 23. Yikes. On top of that, the SRX featured the notorious 4.6 liter North Star V8. Now this engine was originally designed for a transverse front wheel drive platform, but in 2004 it was heavily modified for a longitudinal rear and all wheel drive use. Think of it as an open air roadster that can seat seven. 
Cadillac SRX Performance Utility. Cadillac. Breakthrough. Ford Excursion 4x4 Limited Diesel. This full-size SUV was derived from the Ford F-Series, sharing its platform with the F-250. It is the longest and heaviest SUV to enter mass production. The 2023 Grand Wagoneer matches the Excursion in length, but is lighter. Ford slotted the Excursion above the Expedition and Explorer. The main reason for this was to compete with the 2500 Series Suburban and Yukon XL. If you ask me, I would so much rather have one of these though. One is the looks, I think it looks better, and two, Ford offered a diesel. The 2500 series never got one for the Yukon and Suburban. The highest trim line was limited at the time, which offered a few notable features over the XLT. Leather seats, heated front seats, alloy rims, and rear entertainment system. With the all-wheel drive and 6.0 diesel optioned in, this was one expensive car. And still kind of is, if you want one with low miles, you're going to be paying well over 25 grand. The 7.3 was offered until 2003 when they switched over to the 6 Blow. Definitely a more reliable engine that can easily surpass 300,000 miles. Cadillac CTS-V. Prior to 2004, Cadillac was seen as a soft riding American luxury brand. The CTS was one of the first Cadillacs to have the new design system. Bold lines, sharp angles, and tall taillights. The CTS shared its platform with the XRX previously mentioned. Three body styles were offered, four-door sedan, two-door coupe, and five-door sport wagon. Just after two years, Cadillac came out with the V-Series. The Cadillac CTS V, the world's fastest production sedan. We don't just make luxury cars, we make Cadillacs in direct response to the M5 and S4. Initially, the CTS came with a 5.7 LS pushing 400 horsepower and 395 foot-pounds of torque, made it into a 6 b manual sharing the Z06's gear ratios. 2006 and 7 models got the 6-liter LS2 used in the Corvette. Same horsepower and torque as the other engine, however, the LS2's benefit was a wider torque band peak which arrived at 4,400 RPM instead of 4,800. So after hearing all of this, was it worth an extra 17 grand over the 300 SRT8? Let me know in the comments. Hummer H2 SUT. Yeah, don't click off yet. I'll try to be quick with this one. The H2 was marketed by Hummer and built by GM from 2000 until 2009 and was based on a modified version of the GMT 820 platform. Three quarter ton pickup in the front and half ton frame in the rear. Sport utility truck or SUT was introduced in 2005 because of a 20% drop in sales from the regular Hummer H2. They thought by making a truck version that it would increase sales. The bed is so small, it's almost impractical. The visibility in this truck is god awful as well. And despite its large size, it offered barely any room for five passengers. Inside, it was pretty loaded up. Bose sound system, heated front and rear seats, leather upholstery, eight-way power adjustable seats, and some other nice features. Also, these trucks were decent off-road, just there were so many other options that were far cheaper. Lincoln Navigator 4x4 Ultimate, the counterpart of the Expedition, and also the heaviest production Lincoln ever built. To understand how revolutionary the Navigator was, we have to go back to the early 90s. There wasn't a market for big luxury SUVs. The Navigator was the first in 1998 and it changed the game. Other companies started following this, and before you knew it, the Escalade was introduced along with the GX and Q7. Everyone wanted one of these. All the celebrities had one. It was so advanced for its time. Specifically, the second gen 4x4 Ultimate was the top of the line package. Under the hood, we have a 5.4 liter V8 from the F-150, which was tweaked a little bit, making 300 horsepower. Also for 2005, a new 6-speed automatic was introduced, allowing for smoother shifts over the 5-speed. The Navigator had all the bells and whistles. It was super nice for the time. The all-new 2003 Lincoln Navigator. Cadillac XLR, the company's flagship model, more expensive than the Escalade ESV Platinum. And technically the Escalade is more expensive than most cars on this list. I mean, it was 70 grand back in 2006. I just wanted to have a little bit more variety. The XLR was built in the same factory as the Corvette, but it doesn't have the LS. Instead, it has a North Star V8 making 320 horsepower. The interior was Italian designed and was extremely expensive. Sound a little familiar? 
I mean, it was the first Cadillac to have heated and ventilated seats, but who really cares? And now that I'm doing research on the XLR, GM came out with a V-Series, which was $110,000 in 2006. In today's money, that's around 170 grand. Same North Star, just now it was supercharged, making 440 horsepower. I wasn't old enough to know about this car back in 2006. Was it really worth that price tag? Ford GT, the most expensive American car of the early 2000s. Introduced in 2002 at the North American Auto Show, its styling paid tribute to the 60s GT40, interpreting cues from the past in a modern shape. Over its production run, 4,038 units sold. As soon as this car was released, people had to have it. Thus, the demand outpaced the supply, which led to people paying a hundred grand over sticker price. 5.4 liter V8 pushing 550 horsepower with 600 foot-pounds of torque made it into a six-speed manual. Today, these cars are very expensive. Some owners want over 400 grand for them. I'm not really into sports cars like Ferrari or Lamborghini, but the Ford GT is definitely an exception. It is now time for the tier list, I have nothing in F. In D tier, I have the Hummer H2 SUT and Cadillac XLR. In C tier, I have the Thunderbird and SRX. In B tier, I have the Crossfire SRT6, CTSV, and Navigator. In A tier, I have the 300 SRT8 and Excursion. And our first S tier car, the 4GT. Kinda hopping on the bandwagon with that one. But, I mean, if you've ever seen one or know anything about one of them, they're pretty impressive. That's going to wrap it up for this video. Thank you so much for making it this far. I really appreciate it. My last video about the trucks, well over 100 likes, which is awesome. So, I'll be making a dedicated video about the 90s trucks. I don't want to make too many truck videos all at once. I'll have it out maybe next week or the week after. With that said, I will see you next week.